Hi, Jamie here from Poodle Press. I hope you're well. Um, I thought it would be fun and interesting to try and work out why Gutenberg still uh, gets such poor reviews on the WordPress.org website um, in the plugin review. So Word, um, Gutenberg is a plugin as well as being part of the core software now. It also is still a plugin and it generally gets really bad reviews still. So if you look here, um, this, these are the number of reviews it's had, 3,191, and you can see it's got 616 five-star reviews, uh, but it's got over 2,137, well, it has exactly that, one-star reviews. So it's still getting panned pretty uh, considerably on the WordPress.org website as reviews. Now, my experience of Gutenberg, I should explain, we, we develop plugins and we train people in WordPress as a business, Poodle Press. My experience, we love Gutenberg and we, we build plugins on top of Gutenberg these days because we see the power of it. And my experience as a trainer, training beginners mainly, is that they love it too. So if you give a beginner or somebody that's intermediate with WordPress, uh, Gutenberg, for the first time, let's say they haven't used WordPress before, uh, my general, uh, the general reaction I get from those people is they generally love it. So why, why is it getting such poor reviews on the WordPress.org website. Now there's lots of reasons for this. I don't want to dive too much into the sort of the bigger scheme of things why I think this might be. What I want to do today is just purely concentrate on looking at the actual reviews themselves and see if we can unpick some of the stuff that the problems that people are having and understand why they're giving these bad reviews. So we're going to start from the top. We're going to go through them. Uh, some of these issues I might be able to answer. Some I, some I won't because they haven't explained things. Uh, and it's also interesting to look as a plugin developer myself, how useful these reviews are to uh, the people that build the, the plugins. Because if you look through a lot of these, well, we're gonna look through them together in a second, but if you look through a lot of these reviews, they're not actually saying why they don't like it in many cases, which is kind of interesting in itself. Um, but let's go through them. So this first one I think is Italian. So I've actually translated this one. Uh, so here we go. Despite the progress made, it remains a useful tool only for enthusiasts and hobbyists. See, that's an interesting point. At this point, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't it be easier, more orderly, and more democratic to distribute WordPress without a default editor and let developers and users choose their favorite editor, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's not. It's quite an interesting idea that you decouple the editing experience from WordPress anyway, and you kind of got that with the with the classic editor plugin, which disables Gutenberg. Um, but it's quite an interesting point. But again, we're not actually. Um, we're not getting any information. So if me as a plugin developer, I couldn't look at that and actually improve my product. Um, but it's got some interesting points nevertheless. Right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, so again, this is another one star, uh, one star one from Freddie. Let's get into this. Uh, I was wrong. I heard and read all the negative feedback on Gutenberg, but I saw this stunning theme with good reviews on Theme Forest, so I bought it, only to find it completely unusable because of Gutenberg. Um, he goes on, I've never experienced such levels of frustration with either any other block editor I've used in my life. He's been designing for 10 years, um, but nothing could prepare him for the dumpster fire that was called the block editor. I cannot accomplish all the most uh, most mundane tasks without using preformatted theme or Gutenberg. Uh, do you want to center a button on a page? Good luck. I've been trying for an hour, but even using the Collins block is buggy and it doesn't yield results. And then he carries on. So a few things to say there. Um, we're getting a few things that he's struggling with, which is kind of cool. Thank you, Freddie. Um, Theme from Theme Forest. So, you know, I, I generally I would avoid, sorry, Theme Forest fans, but you know, some of the themes on Theme Forest are great, but some of those themes are really bloated and slow. And the theme really, the the useful, the, the, the heavy lifting that a theme does these days should be less and less because of Gutenberg, uh, because Gutenberg makes the uh, what a theme needs to do less and less, hopefully. So I'm just gonna address the button issue because that is a common question. So let's just add the buttons block here. So this is the buttons block. And so Gutenberg now lets you add these cute little buttons and you can add multiple buttons as well, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you can link them just by clicking on them and adding a link up here. And then if you want to change the background color, you can do that over here. So, you know, that's that's kind of cool. So uh, I think Freddie's point was he couldn't center them. Now, one of the, one of the complexities with Gutenberg, which you see a lot of, is because you can nest blocks within other blocks. And a lot of people don't realize this is happening with the buttons block. So it's kind of confusing. So if you click into this button, you, you kind of would expect to see a center option here, but you can't do it. And that's because these buttons block are actually part of a container buttons block. 
So if you're, if you're ever confused with that, there's a few ways to see that. You can either look down here and the breadcrumbs down here. That'll give you the structure. But that's probably more interesting up there. You've got those three lines and that will tell you the hierarchy that you're working with. This is especially useful if you're working in columns. So we can actually see that the buttons block actually contains the top level container buttons block and then each one of these is a button. So if I'm clicking in here, I can't center the whole thing. So you have to click at the top level and then you'll see the alignment option here and then you just align center. But I agree with Freddie, it's not, it's not the most intuitive thing but that's kind of the nature of blocks because because they're powerful and you can nest them. You can have these circumstances where it is a bit confusing that if you're clicking on the thing, you'd expect to be able to center it. Just make sure you're right, you're at the, the top level here and then you can align them very easily. So hopefully that's helped Freddie. Right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, Confixing plugin. I'm deactivating and deleting the plugin due to conflicts with widgets. It does not recognize all the options of the theme, does not allow the addition of new ones, and is totally dysfunctional. The current widget system is in infinitely uh, superior. So that's a little bit confusing. Maybe you're using the Eric's experimental stuff with widgets. Uh, generally, um, I'd avoid that for now. I hate this editor. Um, I guess this is a great move if WordPress is now only for idiots. I can't wrap my brain around how terrible that, that this you have to be for this editor to be a good idea for you. Um, so again, it's not <laughs> it's not hugely useful for if I'm the plugin developer and I'm trying to improve my product. There's not not a huge amount of information. And then down here, Dark Coder has come in with so true. WordPress is now idiots building for idiots. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. But there we go. Um, right, big fail for WP. I hate Gutenberg. It destroys theme development. <laughs> okay, um, well it doesn't really, and it shouldn't do. Uh, it'd be good to know, um, mini mamenti. Is that how I pronounce it? What you mean by that? Um, it doesn't destroy theme development. In fact, some of the best themes out there now are built for Gutenberg. So themes like Astra works beautifully with um, Gutenberg. Bloxy. I'm a big fan of Bloxy. Um, there's one called Go, which the guys at GoDaddy have built. And there's other ones out there, but they're really, really, they're really fast and lightweight. That's the beauty behind themes that are built for Gutenberg, because the theme isn't having to do all the heavy lifting anymore. Like, you know, I'm not going to name names, but some bloated themes out there that are trying to pack all this stuff into the theme. You don't get that with the new, the new faster um, Gutenberg themes. Anyway, so impossible. Oh, it's Freddie again. Hold on, Freddie's back. I oh, know it's not. Um, so, I don't know what Freddie's replied. WordPress changed, so this is Dwin D. Uh, WordPress changed the site platform to Gutenberg. I cannot edit my site now. I want to remove pictures from my front page and it's impossible after wasting several hours. I know nothing more than I did when I started. The select option selects nothing. The edit option uh, does not offer any variable options for what I need to do. I feel like I'm pressed to delete the entire page and start over because editing is not working. Not happy at all, not, not at all happy. And then Freddie's come in. To, uh, to download a, a plugin called Disable Gutenberg. Um, there's also a plugin called um, the Classic Editor plugin, which will kind of do the same thing, but I wouldn't recommend that because I'm a big fan of Gutenberg. <laughs> so it's hard to say what's going on uh, with their website here. They're not happy, but we don't actually have any information because deleting pictures um, should be pretty straightforward. Um, it depends how it's been added. So if, let's say if I add the cover block here, which the cover block is one of the best blocks in my view. It's super useful. Uh, I don't actually have any photos. Let's just choose a photo. And let's use that as my background. So you should just be able to click on the block and click on those three dots and remove the block that way. That's kind of one way to do it. Again, if you're working with blocks within blocks, you can always use this hierarchy to actually choose the right block that you want to work on. Um, but it's just those three dots and remove. So it should be fairly straightforward. Again, it may be that the theme is doing some stuff. So this is really interesting as well here. So we go from one star to five star. So you will find it almost impossible to find anything other than a five star or a one star review with Gutenberg. So they could just get rid of the two, three and four stars. There's no need for them anymore. Uh, perfect, no problems. For me, at least it works like a charm. It does what it's supposed to do. This is my world, my dream, the reviewer. I think that people 
are, that are leaving one star and are complaining are people that is working with WordPress for a long time doing old tasks the old way. I see that a lot where you've got people uh, that have come to it afresh that have been using WordPress for a long, long time. And I think there's a number of reasons why we see this friction. One is the way it was imposed on the community. Um, two, I think the early iterations weren't very intuitive. It's a lot better now. And when we started as well, there weren't many plugins that supported it. That's changed a lot now. Um, and then it says, in my opinion, the world moves forward. It is what it is. Just accept it. Sorry if hurt someone's feeling with this review. That was not my intention. He's, he's getting ready for the whipping. <laughs> or they're getting ready for the whipping that they're probably going to get, but they haven't. So that's good. Right, next one. Cannot edit in the block editor by Rev Shafe. One star. Uh, once I updated this plug in my site. Oh, hello. Uh, let's go back. My site became uneditable in the block editor, the page failing to load altogether. If I can figure out how to grind gray to 8.8, .8, I will do that immediately. So this is a really interesting point. So I would generally recommend probably for most sites, don't use the plugin Gutenberg on your production sites. And that's because the plugin is normally a few steps ahead of what's in core. So if you stick to core, you're going to, you're going to still have Gutenberg, but you won't have maybe the, you won't have the latest version of Gutenberg. And the latest version is always going to have a few things that haven't been tested as much as what goes into core. It's not to say it's not reliable, but once it's in core, it's actually being tested every day by millions and millions of sites. So I would generally not use the plugin on a production site unless you're a WordPress dev or you're really, you know, you're really into Gutenberg. So I would just uninstall the Gutenberg plugin, Rush Chef, and use what's in core because that will probably work. Okay. Um, Dysfunctional editor, Orlando. Let's have a look at you five days ago. Again, one star. Uh, right, the Gutenberg editor misses essential features like producing indents for which one you could use the classic ed editor block. The block structure makes it impossible to start, insert your own HTML snippets into an article. One's own HTML snippets might get rewritten or result in display problems in the WYSIWYG editor mode. Um, it's not possible to leave the block structure to move aspects around uh, aspects like pictures. So just a couple of things to say there. So there is still, if you're using the Gutenberg editor, there is still uh, the classic editor block. So if you still want to go back and use all the stuff that you're used to, there is just a block called the classic editor and it just it inserts the uh, the old classic editor. It kind of looks kind of horrible now, but it's there if you want it. So if you want to go back and use that stuff, you can. I think the next one was HTML snippets. And again, there is uh, sorry, the other thing says, if you want to insert a block, uh, you can either click this plus sign or a quicker way is just hit forward slash and then search for the block you want. So there is actually a custom HTML block where you can just pop in your stuff and it works like a charm. So just use the HTML block. And the other question was moving around stuff on the page. Let me just grab some like pictures. So let's add, a, let's add an image here. Have I got anything in my library? Yeah, I have. So let's just do that one. And let's put some text under here. So one of the beauties, because they these are blocks on your pages now, it is actually really easy to use to move these around. You just click on the thing you want to move. So if I want to move this paragraph up, you see these arrows here that appear? You can just move it up, move it up or down. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, intuitive to move stuff around. You can also move stuff, uh, like if you've got long pages, which I can't show you today, in a way, an easy way. Um, right, next one, uh, Cath Catholica. Slow, intuitive, and not user-friendly. Okay, using Gutenberg slows me down. More clicks to do and find things. Have come up with shortcuts to do things you could speedily do before the old editor. I feel Gutenberg is a narrow-minded approach to post-editing simply because I don't think WordPress appreciated all the um, different ways people using the old editor uh, which is kind of true actually yeah I mean it's when you're building these plugins it's almost impossible to keep everyone's how everyone's using this stuff um, in your aspect I feel they had a single vision went for a minimalistic design but practically made editing posts harder for users like me I care about how my uh, posts look when they're published not how they look when I'm editing them when I'm editing them, I want them varied and easy customization. Moreover, I dislike it. It's more and more being focused on users, which is a strange comment, um, and how we have to download a plugin to disable it. Like many others, I don't like using too many plugins on my site. I use Code Editor a lot, and on Gutenberg, I have to do finger gymnastics 
Um, to code editor, previewing takes post longer in Gutenberg 2. You can't open up other WordPress menu items on Gutenberg 2. You have to open a new tab in your browser to find them again. So um, yeah, those are good points. I think if you're a developer, you can sort of understand, I can understand why you might be frustrated by it. One common complaint, which I think Matt talks about, is that when you first start using Gutenberg now with WordPress 5.5, it will start in what's called full screen mode, which you which you lose the context of the dashboard, so you lose all this stuff down the left-hand side. But you can get it back uh, just by clicking on these three dots in the top right. Um, sorry, clicking on these three dots on the top right and unticking full screen mode there. And then you get the context back of your menus. So it depends how you like to work, but generally that's the way I like to work. So I put them, I put them back, but some good stuff there. Right, um, let's go for this one, Alex F. It's a terrible editor, can be used for torture. So uh, <laughs> I don't think you need to, I mean, that's not, again, it's not terribly helpful if you're a uh, developer of a plugin, but you get his point. Um, right, nah. One, one star from Andy. Uh, tried to use it a few times now and it's frustrating. Maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't appear to have anywhere near the design and customization options of Site Origins Page Builder. So I'm a big fan of, um, or used to be a big fan of Site Origins Page Builder. But in my view, Gutenberg is far more powerful these days than um, Site Origin. So if you want to check some of, some of my other um, videos, I'll put some links in below this one on some of the cool stuff you can do with it. And again, one of the one of the biggest things here, biggest things here, is because there's this ecosystem of people building plugins on top of Gutenberg. There's you know there's so much stuff coming, so much inventive stuff that's coming out that you can, it's so extendable. Uh, but you take his point, uh, right? And then we've got a five star review, nice page builder, very nice. That WordPress has two editor modes for some projects. I'm using Class A Editor and for another builder, everything looks impressive. So that's says what it does on the tin. Right, let's go on to this one, absolute garbage. Right, so this is some CR Brown 25. Um, the block editor is the most annoying release in the history of all updates. I'm not sure why advanced users have sacrificed, have sacrificed efficiency just so WordPress can appeal to their lowest common denominator. So I think, uh, yeah, again, we don't, we don't have a lot of information to go by in terms of why you don't like it. Um, lowest common denominator, I guess, is, I don't know, uh, maybe talking about um, the fact that it's built for beginners, I don't know. Right, uh, right, one star, disastrous from, I can't pronounce that, or at Rob Bito. Uh, I really tried, I decided to give it a try and create some webs with Gutenberg. At first it worked more or less well, although its usability is very bad, but every so often blocks that have worked are broken and it converts them to HTML code. It's impossible to work like this. The reusable blocks seem like a good idea, but be careful on at least experience on the least expected day, they disappear or stop working. I gave it a one star for the grouping option, which is the only thing worth it. <laughs> okay, so reusable blocks are really cool that you can, when you're creating a block, let's say I create a nice looking cover block here. Do this very quickly. Um, let's just add a background. Put some text in. And then I'm gonna put a um, buttons underneath here. And I'm going to center it. In fact, let's also uh, put a background image behind this fella. Uh, just so we can create something a bit more snazzy. And let's make it parallax here. Okay, so you've got this, you've got this kind of cool parallaxy block. And uh, one of the nice things you can do is you can save that now as a reusable block. And that will save that block to a library of blocks that then you can reuse on any page or any post within your website. So you don't have to recreate it. So that's what um, this review is having a problem with. I've never had an issue with it, um, them disappearing. So who knows what's gone on there. It may be another plugins interfered, the normal WordPress stuff really. Uh, and then this one here, um, this one here, I've definitely seen this happen with blocks that are broken and converts them to HTML. I suspect that's using a third party plugin that adds its own blocks. That's the only time I've ever seen that. I've never seen any of the core blocks have that issue. 
but it may have done, but I've never seen it. Uh, right, let's just go on to a, a few more. Hate it, hate it, that sounds good. So let's see if, no headings, gaps everywhere, bugs. This is a terrible plugin. I really hate this plugin. Um, so <laughs> again, it's not, it's not massively um, positive. So to, if you want to do a heading, you can just add the heading block, two ways really, just add the heading block, which is just a block, okay? Add the heading block and you can change it to different types of headings if you want to. Uh, you can also style it like so and other cool stuff. Um, the other way you can do it is you can actually convert blocks. So let's say I've got this paragraph block and I want to convert this to a heading. Uh, you can just transform them. So transforming blocks is a really cool option in Gutenberg. Save you a ton of time. So you can do headings. Um, gaps everywhere. I suspect that might be because of the theme. I've seen that in some themes where you between blocks you've got large gaps. But that'll just be the theme support isn't terribly good for it. Right, I'm just going to do a couple more. Absolute trash, that sounds good. Okay, so Dean Coded says, a needless change that mangles the way millions of long-term publishers have been managing websites for years, harder to use than the classic editor, and far, far more difficult to customise and manage content. A brain-dead hamster would know better than make Gutenberg the default. At least give me a box in settings to enable the classic editor. That's the least of what should be done. The most that we WP team can do take Gutenberg out and shoot it and then feed it to the sharks and never mention it again <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> so again we don't have a lot we don't have a lot of um, actual specific stuff um, to go on in terms of how I wanted to improve Gutenberg for this particular review uh, but this this is an interesting idea that you actually give users a choice of editor um, within within WordPress so you have the classic editor and um, you have the new block editor I don't see that happening I think that would be first that would be basically forking WordPress and I, I can't see that's going to happen now there's too much investment in Gutenberg and G Gutenberg has come too far um, and we've kind of got it de facto as well with plugins um, right let's just do uh, there's loads here aren't there so um, let's just finish with that one maybe that one's going to have some some interesting information. So this is Desert07. I hope I pronounced you right. Uh, whoever created this editor needs to be fired and banned from designing UX products forever. Comparing to Elementor uh, is awful. My users struggle to understand how to write articles inside the complicated interface. Again, um, it'd be great to get a bit more specific stuff on what the, in particular, the UX, uh, just from a design point of view, what in particular the UX uh, that he's struggling with. Personally, I prefer Gutenberg to Elementor. Um, I find it a more intuitive way to, in terms of the flow, uh, in terms of adding blocks. Um, but it'd be great to get some more information. So there we go. There's a quick whiz through uh, some of the reviews. They, they continue to be largely, you'd have to say, largely negative. Um, it'd be great, I guess, for the Gutenberg development team if they got a bit more detail on what people are looking to improve. Um, but thanks for watching. Um, this is, if you've got any comments, stick them down below. Let me know what you think about Gutenberg, whether you love it, whether you hate it. In particular, whether you think there's specific things that the WordPress uh, development team or the Gutenberg development team could do to improve it. That'd be really interesting. And, and um, not just feeding to the sharks, but actual specific stuff that you'd think they could, they could make, it, make a change to make it more useful for you. Uh, but thanks very much for watching and cheerio.